Okay guys, um, doing something on the lift here, uh, working on my wife's 2014 Dodge Durango Citadel. And the issue I've got is we had a piece of tire kick up and smack this front bumper. And in the process it has broken that um, adaptive cruise control radar sensor. Um, I have bought another one of those, uh, and I'm going to show you a video of how to actually replace it. Um, there is one thing that you have to do. You have to take it to the dealer because they have to calibrate it. You can calibrate the vertical, but the horizontal has to be done with a, a Mopar computer hooked into the OBD2 OBD port, and you have to like drive around, and they have to do something to it. So I, eventually I have to pay them about 150 bucks to uh, recalibrate it, but I'm going to walk you through uh, the process of getting the bumper off and replacing that sensor up to the point that I can. So you see I've got the tires off. Um, I've seen some other videos where these, there's a couple plastic clips. These are the ones where you kind of get behind it, pop the top out, and then you can pull the whole thing out. I've seen people say that they're the... Uh, the ones that are kind of plastic riveted in place you have to drill and cut those out so if you have those this front bumper has been messed with before so um they put in i think some aftermarket ones which these, these are these are nice um because they're nice and easy you can get in and, in and out very quickly so that's the first thing you're going to do and then we're going to pull um this piece off here and that is just plastic clipped in so you kind of just grab it and pull it Hard doing it with a camera in the hand. And you gotta be firm with it. That would have been that bad. I just need to get that one out. Um, anyway, so I'll, I'll take this piece out and then this whole piece of tram will come out and I'll show you that in a second. Okay guys, so this is the this is the piece of trim and you can see these little plastic clips. Um, you just have to pop them out. This is the back, so you can see I'm actually missing one. I'll show you that in a moment. But when they put this thing back on from a previous incident, they didn't put clips back in those three, so those are missing. These front ones are a little bit different. They clip in there like that, and those actually go to the front bumper into those little slots. So that's where those pop into and you just gotta kind of grab it give it a little bit of a yank and it'll pop right out you see kind of one right down here and this is the this is a harbor freight tool i got some little plastic plier things so basically i'm just going to get under there Under there like that. Hard to do with one hand, and then let's pry these little plastic. Woo. That one popped pretty good. I'm go over there. All right. So you see, I'll, I'll have to go buy some more of those clips to, to refill in the different spots. But that's the way you get that off. And now there's a there's a bolt up here that I have to get out, and that one's 10 millimeter, I think, and this one. Oop. And that was missing. They didn't put that one back, so I'll have to replace that piece. Yep, that goes right there. So there's supposed to be a seven millimeter bolt. Here, I'll show it to you on the other side. That right there. They didn't put it back. So, hence one of the reasons I'm doing my own work now. All right, we'll bring you back when I've got some more. Okay, so I did what I did is I took an extra clip out right there so that I could then get in behind here. Took this little access port. I think it's for the headlights to change the headlights. But what I did is I reach in and see these are the fog lights. A lot of people pull the bumper off first and I forget about the fog lights. So something you need to do is get in here, and twist. Oh, I already did it. So let's put it back to show you so it's in there like that you kind of push it twist it quarter turn counterclockwise and it comes out and 
and you won't have the bumper hung up like that. You just kind of check and see. So that's, yeah, so all that's out now. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Um, so this is, this one up here is a 10 millimeter. This one is an eight millimeter, but again, that one was missing. So we'll take that out and then do the same thing on this side. Okay guys, so now we're underneath the car and what you have to do down here is there's one, two, two, three, 10 millimeter bolts. Oh, sorry, all the way over there. One, two, three. And then there's three of these quarter turn uh, fasteners that you have to get out from underneath here. So I'll get those out and we'll bring you back. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the, the entire front bumper off. I'll walk you through what, what I had to do is, so there's this piece, um, and this is on both sides. You can see there's just a bunch of those plastic, same plastic clips, those type of plastic clips. They're all over the place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on each side. And then you have to kind of pop this, uh, this is the rubber seal, it's got some little deals on it, you gotta pop those out to make sure that this can come up, as well as this can come up, and then there's some plastic on the top of the bumper that goes in here, and you have to kind of get below that and kind of pull it up, because it goes into these, it latches into those slots there. There's some stuff here, you're gonna, just like I was doing on the side over here, you kinda gotta grab it and pull it out, it'll pop out pop it right back in and then the whole thing just comes off be very careful don't do this from one side try and do it from the middle and do it slowly which pull it this way because it will want to fall down and, and scratch the bumper so you got to kind of make it make sure you support it kind of jiggle it a little bit loosen it off and then pull this way and as you can see I move it over here off to the side and that's the piece that comes on off now something I am gonna have to do is here in a little bit, uh, when that thing hit us, one of these, uh, you can see the, the big mark there, but one of these is broken. So I'm actually gonna get a new piece of, for that, and then you can see it popped this stuff out as well. So I have to get all that back in place, get it correct. Wife doesn't like it when the car is not correct, so I've gotta fix that. All right, we'll bring you back. So. You, the car's down ground level now. I'm gonna raise it back up and start messing with the, the sensor that's down there. All right, thanks. Okay, so I actually did it off camera, but I got the, the little bracket with the sensor out and I'll show you that in just a second, but it's got a connector that goes right into the bottom. You squeeze it and pull. And then this is, is actually uh, set up for the backside. Wow, they got pretty mangled. Um, it's uh, in the fourth hole. There's actually only three adjustment screws for it. This one goes into the fourth hole from the backside. And then there are two eight millimeter bolts that hold it in place, which I took out. And this is the bracket with the sensor on it. I'm kind of messing with it to see if anything. I'm gonna take some notes on, all right. So that's the top right looking at the car. That's the adjustment on it. Because once you get this thing in here, it's supposed to be calibrated and they adjust that screw. And then these two screws. See, that one's dialed almost all the way down. And then this one as well. But the problem with this one is when it hit us, it, it broke this plastic uh, retainer pieces on it. That one popped off broken in some place so I've got to get a, another one of those before I can replace this finish this project so I'll have to go to the dealership maybe if they don't have one I'll have to get it online uh, but you can see the where those are so I'll try and dial the new one into those approximate positions and see how that works all right so pulled one of these off surprisingly if you looked at um, where 
these were at the height of that bolt is roughly where that one is and then that one if you can recall I took it out on the, the old one so then I took it out but it was down as well and this one is run all, almost all the way down as well so these are actually approximately where they were this is the part number for the new one that's six eight two five nine five four eight eight a that's the new part number old one oh, one other thing so these these go in there like that and then they just kind of quarter turn in to lock in place um so i turned them back and then it, it just comes out so that one's already turned but now i just need to use a t20 uh, to back that out and i'll have that off you can see the part number that's the old one 6822377 ae um that's the new one it's got a replacement part number i ordered it off Mopar Parts, MoparPartsGiant.com is where I got it. Um, they've been okay to deal with. Um, I ordered what I thought was the right piece for that. Although when it came to me, it doesn't have the, the slot for the ACC sensor. It's just the one without that. So I have to return that and get the right one. So, all right, I'll bring you back when I have something else. Okay, so we're gonna change this piece out. Um, gotta get this off, which just looks like it's four, of those, uh, four more of those pop pin things. We'll get that off, and then there's, looks like there's a bunch of clips. So I'll be popping those out to be able to put the new one in. Um, and I'll bring you back if I see anything different. Oh, I went and got the moving blanket, put it over the bench um, to protect the, the, the bumper and everything as it's face down. Uh, and then I'm also going to be fixing this. It looks like a piece is broken off of it, but I should be able to pop it back in to make it sit right. We'll see. All right, we'll bring it back. Okay, so to get this lower grill off, um, let's see, I've got cracks there, down there, over there, there's a couple other little places. You have to say there's six, um, I think there's either seven or eight millimeters, I used a 932nd because that's all I can find. Bolts across the bottom, six of them across the bottom, and then it's a matter of unclipping all of those things on top and you kind of pop it this way, because these things, this slides back behind there it's in front now but, but you get the idea it pop it goes behind those tabs and then you see all the little pieces and clips and everything that go in there it's it's not not real easy to get out but it's not hard you gotta be patient and slow um, so yeah that's out now I'm trying to kind of see how this thing gets attached and cleaned. It looks like I'm missing a little, there's a, it's supposed to be a little knife deal that pokes through right there, kind of like that. It looks like that's been broken off. But I'm gonna try and get that piece off to see why it's sitting the way it's sitting, if there's something holding it out or if it's just, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna try and see why it's that way. We'll, we'll bring you back. Okay, so I think we got it. It's all back in place. Um, this piece here kind of had to punch the, the, the tab holding it in place and tilt it out like that so that the tabs and everything for this could slot back in there and then slide down into place. So you see the, the gap's all good. This is all pushed back into place. I need to do the, the final clips up here. But all of this is essentially, a, it's almost one piece. Um, so you kind of have to jiggle it a little bit, get this pried up, get this put it back in place. And now, yeah, and you can see it all, it sits down. It's not all broken up and everything. So what it looks like is I also got a piece of 
rubber or something that hit there and pushed all that down and that's what popped that out. Um, broke a couple of the plastic tabs, but that's what ended up happening there. Looks like there's a little impact mark there as well. Anyway, yeah, so it's coming along. We're uh, starting to get things put back together. I did, so this is Friday, I had to go order clips and the new lower piece, the one they gave me was did not have it, so I ordered it from the local Dodge dealership. They said it'll be here tomorrow morning. So I'll go pick those up and finish thing, everything up, but otherwise, yeah. The car looks kind of funny without any of that stuff on there. All right, we'll bring you back. Okay, so we got the right grill insert finally put in here. Um, finally got it from the dealership. Um, just kind of slotted down on the bottom, six screws, and then it just kind of folds and clips in at a bunch of different spots around. So you just gotta, and you guys just gotta very carefully work around it. So that's in, tightened up all the rest of the hardware. All, so the front bumper is good now. But here's the fun part. Oh, where'd it go? It's over here. So Dodge didn't do me right. Um, this is the fastener that was on there. And you see it's got these funky holes. So this goes in here. Goes in there somehow. it comes from the back. Yeah, so it comes from the back. So it comes up from the back and then a quarter turns into place. So here's the fun part. They don't make those anymore. So I ordered new ones. New ones came in this morning when I went and got the grill and I had the bracket with me because I suspected they might do this something like this to me. They don't, they don't even look like this. They're just they essentially made to, you go in a hole like that. They still fit the little studs, but they don't fit these holes. So this bracket from Dodge is $170. It's a bent piece of metal, which is just ridiculous to me. So here's what I'm gonna try. I'm kind of cheap and I wanna experiment with this. So you see I've marked the edges of the sensor. And what I'm gonna try and do, we'll see if this works is I'm gonna weld these holes up. Then I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna get those plastic clips and I'm going to try and re-drill the holes to be able to put the plastic clips in it and then reattach the new sensor. So we will see if that works. Not sure if it will. Okay, so here we are. Sorry about the fan noise, it's hot. Um, got these all welded up, not the prettiest things, but I'm gonna grind them all down. I scored the center lines of the holes. Uh, one's under there. You can kind of see it up there. And then I've got measurements of where they are. So what I'll be able to do is once I grind this all down, I weld the holes up, I'll grind it back down. And then see I've got the copper pipe on the back side to kind of make sure it's smooth and somewhat manageable. I'll do some finish welding on it here as well. Finish grinding and then I'll come back and use some transfer punches through the old sensor to mark the, the new holes and then we'll drill the new holes. My son went and got me new pieces, which are right there. You see they're completely different. So, yeah, looks like that has to go in from the back side because that's where the pivots and everything. Thing. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, so I'll measure those holes and you see it's got a little lip on it. So I'll measure that and drill the hole to that size. All right, this is the first custom fabrication. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Alright, so 
I got everything welded up and ground down, and then I put a little of this, uh, this machinist called machinist glue um, to kind of mark it, and then I used a what's called a through punch through the hole. Let's say it's a set. 1164 fits just nice and snug. Lined it up, it's about 1.1 inches. You set it, set it in there. It lines up. And you make sure that it's the 1.1 is centered on the bracket on both sides. Anyway, I did it, made sure it was straight over here, straight over here and I punched those holes. And you can see, I've got the marks there. They don't line up with that score line, but that score line was done kind of fuzzily. So I'm more confident with these punch marks. So you can see the punch mark there, there, and there, right in the middle. All right, there, there, there. Uh, and then what I did is I measured that clip right below that that lip and it's 390 and um, so what I'm going to do with a, I'm going to go with a 3 8 hole which is 375 so we'll drill that and see what we got okay so a 375 hole is just about perfect it looks like so you know you kind of got to hit it gently with a, uh, a hammer just to kind of pop it in place but you can see this hole walked on me while I was trying to drill it so I'm going to weld that back up as well as weld that one back up because it didn't quite get in the right spot and then I'm going to key off of that one to find to locate that one and that one to the right locations so I'll, I'll weld those back up and bring you back. Okay, so here we are the next day. Um, bracket looks really, really good. And like I said, from next door powder coated it for me. It dried overnight. Looks really good. Uh, the holes are 375. They look like they're just about perfect. Uh, so that one's in there. Something I noticed that I put, I put all of them in there and then realized um, easier if you take them back out put the studs through them using a two by four and another piece you know kind of tap them into place and then using a long socket as a set tool just pound it down in there and seat it so that's that's one of them um, something I'll, else I'll point out is if you notice this is the new sensor that's that stud that one has an adjustment hit on the head as well as this bottom left-hand corner has an adjustment on the head, and then the top right-hand corner does not. And I figured out yesterday, I should have should have noticed when I was taking it apart. So that's the fixed point in the top left corner. You use that one to adjust your horizontal, and that one to adjust your vertical once you get it in the car. Um, I'll talk about that more once I do get it in, installed. Um, like I told you earlier, I'm going to have to take it. I can do the vertical, so this way I can do that uh, with a level. That one, to get the horizontal, you have to take it to them and pay them $150 uh, to hook the computer up to it, and it'll tell you what to adjust it to. Can't, can't get around that. I don't have the access to the Mopar um, the Mopar diagnostic computer. If you have access to it, you, you might be able to get away with it. All right, I'll put these all back together and bring you back. Okay, so you see I got the bracket installed. A um, couple things that I noticed that once I put it in, this was tilted like this. I imagine from the impact it, it uh, bent it backwards a little bit. So what I did is I just kind of grabbed it and bent it back up because there was no way I was going to have enough adjustment on these screws to be able to get it all the way back. So I just bent it back in place and then did the fine adjustment with the screws. And what I noticed with the screws is I don't have a ratchet or 
anything small enough to get on there. The smallest I have is a seven millimeter or even, I, wow, I even have a four. That's too small. Uh, the smallest I've got there is five thirty second and it's too small. So I had to use a very small adjustable wrench to get, it, to get on it. Here's the way you adjust this. I, and the way I did it, it's a, it's a rough adjustment. I, I, you know, we'll see how it works. If it doesn't work, I'll have to take and get it calibrated. But what I did is I took my ruler and you'll see it's a little bit more than three tenths. Yeah, a little more than three tenths. And then on this side, It's about, about the same. I may go back and remeasure it again. So originally it was about almost uh, four tenths, almost uh, past four tenths on this side, and it was three tenths on that side. So I grabbed this one and I turned it counterclockwise to pull that upper corner in towards the bracket. When I measured this one, I got myself a little small torpedo level. close as I could on here. Let's see. You can see it still needs a little bit more adjustment. Um, still, bottom still needs to come out. And what I'm doing is I'm going clockwise on that to push the bottom out. So counterclockwise moves the nut that way on the screw. Clockwise moves the nut that way. Just for your knowledge make some finer adjustments and then we'll start putting the bumper back together. Okay, so took it for a test drive. Um, you can see it's all back together. I wasn't going to bore you with all the, the put back together steps because it's just the reverse of taking it apart. Took it for a test drive and I was kind of hoping that it would kind of be one of those plug and play modules, but it's not. It is a, uh, you have to be, it has to be calibrated. So I have to take it to the, to the dealership. You get what's called, uh, you get a thing in the, in the cluster it says ray front radar sensor in plant mode, uh, which is a, I guess a freaking software engineer being funny because it's as good as a house plant right now because it does absolutely no good whatsoever. Now, um, you have to take it over there and they have to program it. I have set it up um, as level and as, as flush as I can. Let me see if I can get down here and get you a picture. So the, everything is back in place. Um, the little bezels in there, the, the, the bulb is looking like it's where it's supposed to be. And then all the clips and fasteners and all that kind of crap is put back together. Um, yeah, so it turned out really well. Um, I will supplant, supplement this video if I get something different back from Dodge when I go to get it programmed. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go get it programmed and uh, see what happens. Okay guys, we just got back from the Dodge dealership and it's all calibrated. And I drove home to a little testing of the cruise control at low speeds. Um, everything worked good. It sensed the cars, it braked when it's supposed to, uh, and even uh, practiced the, I guess I came up on a car too quick to make sure that it would see it and do the automatic braking, which it did. It flashed the lights and screamed like it usually does. So yeah, uh, it's all good. Uh, cost me 90 bucks. It took longer than I thought it would. It took like three hours for them to do it, but um, yeah, it's all done. So. All right, we'll see you next time.